Fight fans, welcome to the PBC Podcast, brought to you by Premier Boxing Champions with your host, Kenneth Buhari and Michael Rosenthal. Welcome everyone to the PBC Podcast. I'm Kenneth Buhari. And I'm Michael Rosenthal, editor of USA Today's Boxing Junkie. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode Thanksgiving week, big fight week. This week's guests are 154-pound top contender Erickson Lubin, who is just a joy to talk to. And speaking of a joy to talk to, Vito Melnicki Jr. joins us as well this week. Melnicki, of course, returns Saturday night on the Showtime YouTube stream. The main event on that card is what we're about to discuss. So let's jump right into the PBC Fight of the Week. This Saturday, November 25th, one of the best matchups and best fight cards of 2023 is going down. In the headliner, David Benavides takes on Demetrius Andrade in a battle of undefeated two-time world champions. Benavides' interim WBC World Super Middleweight title will be on the line. The winner uh, also becomes the mandatory challenger to undisputed champ Canelo Alvarez. Showtime pay-per-view starts at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and we start here with the essentials. Okay, here we go. As you mentioned, neither guy's lost a fight. Benavidez is 27-0 with 23 knockouts. Andre 32-0 with 19 knockouts in their last five fights. Benavidez with four knockouts. Andre with two. Last fight for Benavidez was his unanimous decision over Caleb Plant uh, this past March. Andre's last fight was a unanimous decision over Damon Nicholson in January. Uh, Benavidez, 85% knockout percentage. Andre, 59. Benavidez, 130 professional rounds. Andre, 200. Benavidez is nine years younger, 26 years old. Andre, 35. Benavides turned pro 2013 when he was, I believe, 16 years old. Uh, Andre in 2008. Benavides fights from an orthodox stance. Andre from a southpaw stance. Benavides is 6'2. Andre six feet. Benavides has a 74 and a half inch reach. Andre 73 and a half. Uh, Benavides lives and trains in the Seattle area, but he's from Phoenix, and Andre is from Providence, Rhode Island. That's right. By way of Cape Verde. Uh, let's start off with David Benavides. Am I, in your opinion, what are the keys to victory for him? Uh, the word that comes to mind is patience. Uh, I think he might have problems with Andre early in the fight because of Andre's ability, his athleticism, his awkward style. Uh, I expect Andre to stick and move and do everything he can to just not get hit. Uh, and I can't blame him. Um, so Benavides is just going to have to continue to do his thing, which is to walk down Andre throw punches and combinations, and gradually wear, on, wear Andre down. Uh, it could look a lot uh, or at least somewhat similar to the Plant fight, although Plant and Andre don't have the exact same styles. Yeah, I see that. And, and in fact, I think because of that, uh, it would you know behoove Benavides to maybe start a little earlier than what he, uh, you know, and not like Andre is going to stand or allow him to, but um, he doesn't want to get too far behind against a guy like Andre. Speaking of Andre, what are the keys to victory for him? Well, I think he has to do what I described just a second ago, you know, with a caveat. You know, it would be true to his strength, you know, which is his bo- – um, I would be true to his strengths, which is uh, boxing, his boxing ability, his movement. Again, his awkward style. Uh, that's what has made him so effective for so long. Uh, yeah. He's going to have to get Andre's respect, though. You know, he's going to have to plan – Benavidez's his- respect, you mean. I'm sorry. Andre is going to have to get Benavidez respect. Right. Though. He's going to have to plant his feet at strategic times and land hard punches with some consistency. If he doesn't, Benavidez, you know, is not going to have any reason to not continue to march forward the entire fight. And if Benavidez is able to do that, you know, it could be a long or maybe short night for Andre. Mm. Yeah. I mean, one thing about Andre, he's, I think he's dropped every fighter he's faced and he's sneaky like that. You know, he mentioned uh, at the press conference, at the final press conference, that he's looking to walk. Benavidez into some shots and make it an early night. Um, do you think uh, Andrew can have success coming forward and engaging Benavidez? You know, I think that's an interesting concept, you know, maybe surprising Benavidez a little bit by fighting his fight. Uh, I don't think it would work, though. I just think that Benavidez is the bigger, stronger guy, and I think he's a harder puncher. You know, that that approach wouldn't make sense to me, but 
like you said, he and I kind of forgotten that he'd knock, he's knocked down pretty much everybody he's fought, Andre. So he does have some power. Uh, yeah. But, you know, this is his second fight at 168. So we'll see against a really tough guy. So we'll see how much right. power he has. Yeah. Right, exactly. Certainly we don't we, we don't know if he's brought all of that power um, up with him. But we'll see. I mean, this is his second fight at the weight. So it should be interesting. But regardless of, of how much power he has, does he have to get uh, Benavidez's respect early? Yes, I think so. Uh, again, if he doesn't uh, get Benavidez's uh, respect early in the fight, I think Benavidez is just going to build more and more momentum as the fight progresses, and that that probably won't work out well for Andre. Uh, if Andre can show Benavidez he can hurt him early in the fight, I think it might throw Benavidez off. You know, from then on, you just never know. No, conversely, does can Benavidez win a boxing match if that's what it becomes? I guess in, in a way you're asking whether Benavides can win if he's unable to break Andre down, which he normally right. does, which he normally does to opponents. Uh, I think that'd be a tough fight for Benavides to win. You know, it would mean that Andre has done a good job sticking and moving. Uh, I think Benavides would have a chance, though. You know, maybe Andre isn't active enough to win rounds. You know, that's a possibility. And don't forget that Benavides throws a lot of punches, you know, and yeah. a lot of combinations. Uh, so, yes, I think Benavides could win a boxing match, but obviously that's not the best uh, situation for him. Yeah, exactly. But look, he's going up against a guy who's a really, really good boxer with, with lots of experience and, you know, could make this uh, a ugly fight for David. Or, you know, David might not look so great in this fight. How what if he won not looking great or, or had an ugly win? I mean, does it affect his, his status in any way or affect the way he's viewed or how we should view him? Or is it just, you know, a win is a win? I think it's. It's mostly the latter. You know, honestly, I, I think there's a decent chance it would be an ugly win, given the opponent and his style once again. Uh, it would be difficult for anyone to look good against Andre. You know, of course, I also think there's a decent chance that Benavides does wear him down uh, and either take him out or win a one-sided decision like he did against Plant. You know, bottom line, though, is the way you put it, a win, a win, is, a, a win is a win. You know, in this case, I think you almost have to excuse him because of Andre's style. Yeah. What, what does a win mean for Benavidez here? Could set up his dream fight against Canelo Alvarez. Uh, I think Alvarez yeah. has to seriously consider facing the winner of this fight. He's going to uh, receive a lot of criticism if he doesn't, you know, although he could still try to pursue Dimitri Bivol or fight, maybe fight Jamal Charlo if Charlo beats Jose Benavidez Jr. You know, obviously uh, Canelo has options and he's got the leverage to make any decision he wants. Uh, but a win for Benavides keeps him in the mix, though. You know, that's all he can do. And maybe, just maybe, he fights, if he wins this fight, maybe he fights Canelo in May. Yeah, you know, especially if, you know, he looks good in this fight. The, the public demand may be too much. The fight just may be that ripe. Who knows? What about a loss here for Benavides? What does that do to him? You know, you never want to lose any fight, but th that would just be devastating. You know, he appears to be within a whisk whisper, a whisker of getting, you know, his dream fight. Uh, a loss eliminates that possibility, at least in the short term. Uh, maybe he gets a rematch and wins that, but that would take some time. You know, again, a loss now would be very painful for Benavides. Yeah, exactly. And of course, you know, he's looked at as an uh, ascending star in the sport, a rising star. So um, a loss would, would hurt a whole, whole lot. Let's uh, talk about Demetrius Andrew, though. What does a victory here mean for him? I think a win for Andre validates everything he's done in his entire career. Uh, what is for like three decades he's been boxing, you know, since he was a kid. Uh, you know, he's managed to go 15 years as a professional without getting a truly, truly big fight. Uh, finally, he has one. You know, if he wins, particularly if he, you know, does it convincingly, I think people are going to say, yes, he was as good as he appeared to be all along. Uh, that's exactly what uh, what Andre would want to hear. Uh, it would secure his legacy as one of the better fighters of this generation. So this fight is just absolutely enormous for Andre. Yeah, I completely agree. And man, I mean, what a come up that would be for him. You know, such a huge moment. Uh, someone who's been avoided for so long uh, to to beat the boogeyman of the division. What a statement that that would be. How about a loss for, for Andre, though? What does that mean? So... You know, fair or not, I think people are going to say, oh, he was never very good all along. You know, he just built his record by beating second tier opponents. Again, I'm not sure that's entirely fair because he's beat a string of contenders to get to where he is. But I think that's what people are going to say. You know, that's how big this fight is for him. Uh, 
again, he has beaten a lot of contenders. He has titles in two divisions, you know, as we know. And as we know, Benavides is a beast who might be able to beat anyone. So right. we, don't know, we don't know what's going to happen in this fight. Still, I think people are going to be critical of Andre in that way. Yeah, I don't think I still think he's going to have problems getting fights either way. Um, he's just he's just simply too good. We're going to make our predictions in the toe to toe section where we break uh, each fighter down. So um, let's move on to the next fight, uh, the co-main event. We have the long awaited return of WBC middleweight world champion Jamal Charlo. Charlo takes on David's big brother, former interim uh, world champion Jose Benavidez Jr. in a 10-round bout at a 163-pound catch rate. How important is this fight to both of these guys, Mike? Very important. Um, Charlo's been off for two and a half years. Uh, if he falls flat against Benavides, you know, I don't know what the future might hold for him. Uh, I wouldn't write him off. You know, maybe the layoff will have played a role in his performance. Uh, but, you know, that would be a huge step backward for him. Uh, for Benavides, this might be a last chance. You know, if he wins this yeah. fight, uh, it'd be both a huge accomplishment and a great story, you know, given his given his past. Uh, if he loses, particularly if he loses badly, if it's if it's clear loss, you know, my guess is that he might be done as a major player. It'll be harder for yeah. him to remain one. Yeah, a lot riding uh, on this fight for both of these guys. What are the keys to victory for Jamal Charlo? Also patience, but for a different reason from Benavides, in my opinion. You know, Charlo is bound to have at least some rust early in the fight. You know, he has to work through that, you know, take his time, find his range and rhythm, which I think will come as the fight progresses. He's the bigger guy. Uh, I think he's the better boxer. If he does his thing, if he fights behind his, his jab, which is excellent, you know, follows with good, clean combinations like we've seen so many times, I think this fight is his. Yeah, you're probably right. What about uh, Benavides? What are the keys to victory for him? I think he needs to get off to a quick start. I think he needs to show early in the fight that he belongs in the ring with Charlo. Um, again, my guess is that Charlo will have some rust. Uh, that could be an opportunity for Benavides to build a lead or you know, possibly even hurt Charlo. Who knows? Uh, I would fight responsibly but aggressively the first several rounds and see what he could do. Uh, then he could try to build on that momentum. You know, Benavides can't move that well, but he's a good, experienced uh, boxer and a really tough guy. I think he, if he gets off to a good start and is able to take Charlo's best shots as the fight progresses, I think he's got a chance to win this fight. Yeah, you, you spoke about Charlo's ring rust. I mean, is 30 months too long uh, a time to come back from? You know, I hear this. I ask fighters that, and they almost always kind of give me the same response. It just depends on the guy. Um, right. uh, I, Charlo's a, a veteran guy. He knows how to, you know, prepare for fights. Uh, I think I think he's going to be fine. But who knows? You know, we have to wait and see what happens in the first few rounds. Um, and, and another thing is that you know these days it seems like guys spend a lot of there's a they, they don't fight as often, obviously, but sometimes right. there's huge gaps, you know, between fights. You know, two and a half years is an enormous gap, but uh, I think he's going to be fine. Yeah. What what about what a win does for each guy? What what does a, a victory here mean? Well, a victory for for uh, Charlo is he's back. You know, it's it's interesting because he still holds his middle his title, his middleweight title, but uh, he sort of has to prove that he's the guy he was three years ago. Uh, if he does that, I think he's back. Then he's in the mix to fight Canelo Alvarez. He's in, you know, the thick of the championship action, which is where he wants to be. So that's the sort of statement that he wants that he wants to make. Uh, and a win for Benavides is, you know, I, we were just talking about how easy it would be to write him off if he loses this fight. If he wins this fight, he's that guy. You know, he's in the thick of the the championship picture, which again would be just an amazing, amazing story. He's amazing. No matter what happens with Benavides, it's an amazing story. And I respect yeah. the hell out of the guy, but this is a big, this is a big challenge for him. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, sounds like you're leaning toward a Charlo victory. What's your, uh, what's your prediction? I think Charlo's too good for Benavides, you know, assuming the time off didn't, you know, do some sort of damage that I can't predict. Uh, it won't be easy because of the things I mentioned about Benavides, but I think he's going to outbox Benavides and he's going to win a clear decision. Yeah, I, I like uh, Charlo by unanimous decision as well. I think it's going to take him a while, uh, get the rust off, get his timing back. But when it clicks, I expect him to dominate. You know, uh, Benavides is a tough out. I think he's going to have some moments early, but ultimately Charlo's superior uh, skill should shine through. Let's move on to the next match on this stacked card. IBF 140-pound world champion Subriel Matias 
defending his title against undefeated top contender Shojahan Ergachev. Mike, give us your thoughts on Subriel Matias. Real quick before before I uh, respond to that, I just want to say that I'm really looking forward to this fight. You know, these guys have a combined record of 42 and one with 39 knockouts, which is just nuts if you if you think about it. Uh, someone's going to get knocked out in this fight, and people just love that kind of matchup, including me. Um, my assessment of Matias, I really like Matias. I, you know, I think he's a good fundamental boxer who is offensive minded and has the power to back that up. Uh, that's my favorite kind of fighter. A good boxer is also a guy who, you know, tries to knock the other guy's head off. Uh, it's difficult to say how good he can be because he hasn't fought the top, top guys yet. But I like everything I see I see from him. You know, he just has to show he can do the same thing against the next level opposition. Right. I think he has I think he has a chance to be become something special. Yeah. And, and this might be the toughest test of his uh, of his career. What makes Ergashev a threat? The first thing that comes to mind is the power. You know, I mentioned the not, the high knockout percentage of both guys. Uh, he's also a good boxer. You know, he was a top amateur in Uzbekistan, which has a pretty good boxing tradition. Uh, and he's a southpaw, which, you know, which is always uh, uh, a plus. Uh, it's always difficult to fight uh, southpaws. Uh, I think what stands out, though, is his power. You know, he stopped 20 of his 23 opponents, which is impressive no matter who you're fighting. Yeah. Uh, I do have to add, though, you know, this is a significant step up for him. He hasn't seen anything quite like Matias yet, so we'll see how it goes for him. Yeah, I am so looking forward to this match. Answer your prediction. Who do you think uh, Who do you think wins? I'm going to go with the guy who feels farther along, which is Matias. Um, I'm expecting an absolute firefight, at least at times. And I think Matias, you know, with more experience at this level and probably more power, is going to get the better of the exchanges. I think he's going to catch Yergashev sometime in the middle of the fight and take him out. Yeah, I mean, it's a dangerous matchup. You know, perhaps the best matchup on this card, and that's saying so. something. Yeah. You know, uh, any of these guys could get stopped, but I'm with you. I'm leaning toward Matias. I think if he can survive the early onslaught unscathed, uh, he's in a uh, position to, you know, do damage later on. Although I guess you could say the same for Ergashev, but yeah. give me a... Uh, Give me Matias by 10th round stoppage. Now, the uh, the pay-per-view opener features another world title bout, world title bout uh, Hector Garcia defending his WBA 130-pound championship against the dangerous uh, Lamont Roach. Mike, it's been a while since we've seen Garcia. He burst onto the scene with his impressive uh, 2022 campaign. A lot of people thought he was a, a fighter of the year. Then, obviously, the, the loss to Javante Davis. What's your take on Hector Garcia? First, I don't want to be too hard on him following the loss to, to Tank Davis. You know, he was, you know, the latest guy who took a really big swing against a bigger, better guy just and just missed. You know, I applaud his gumption for even taking that fight. Um, I think Garcia is still the excellent boxer puncher who outpointed Chris Colbert and Roger Gutierrez, formidable guy. Now he's at the weight he should be fighting at. Yeah, and, uh, well, it's not, it doesn't get any easier with uh, with Lamont Roach. What's your... What's, your take on uh, on Roach? Roach is an excellent polished boxer with a really strong amateur foundation, which I always love. You know, he's a former U.S. national champion, uh, and he's continued to dominate most of his professional oppo- opponents. Uh, he lost the decision to then title holder Jamel Herring when Herring was at his absolute best in 2019, uh, but he's bounced back to win four in a row. Uh, Roach is 28 years old. I think I think he's at his very peak right now. You know, he has a chance to win this fight. He's just a really good boxer. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, it, it's a close, close fight. I, in my opinion, it's a 50-50 fight. What about you? Do you think it's 50-50 fight? And if so, why? I don't know if it's quite 50-50. I might give Garcia an edge. You know, based on the past. Uh, you know, but, you know, we do know what Garcia can do. Uh, but it does appear to me that Roach is the real deal. So I think we have a real fight here. It's, if it's not 50-50, it's close. Yeah, I think you're right. Who do you like? So this is a this is a difficult call. Uh, I think it's going to be a close fight. Uh, I'm going to go with Garcia because he's already proved he can get it done at the highest level. Uh, I mean, his performances against Colbert and Gutierrez were special performances. I think that guy will give Roach serious problems and probably win a decision. Uh Maybe the loss to Davis is in his head, though. I mean, we don't really know that. Um, we'll see how he how he looks in this fight. Uh, I won't be shocked if Roach delivers an upset uh, because of the ability we talked about. Uh, I'm going to go with Garcia, though. Yeah, me too. Uh, I like Garcia here by close decision. I mean, I could see him getting out hustled, uh, maybe even hurt by Roach. I, I do think this is a 50-50 fight, but Garcia refreshed, rejuvenated, and assuming there isn't any hangover 
or anything from that Davis fight, I expect him to to edge a nail biter. Now, before the pay per view, be sure to tune into the uh, onto the Showtime YouTube channel for some great early action in the main event. Sergey Lipinitz, the former 140 pound champion, takes on Michelle Rivera uh, in a 10 round bout. That another fight that could steal the show, quite frankly. And on the co-main of the Showtime digital stream, our next guest takes a big step up in class, facing Alexis Salazar in a 10-round Super Welterweight bout. Let's welcome back one of Jersey's finest, Vito Melnicki Jr. Vito, first things first, how has camp been ahead of your return on November 25th? Um, Camp's been going great. Um, I've been down in Houston, Texas, training with Ronnie Shields, training with Jamal Charlo, and uh, obviously guys like David Morrell. Um, I've had a great training camp. I was down there for, I think, like 12 weeks. So... I've gotten more than enough work in. I feel great mentally, physically ready to go for November 25th. Yeah, it sounds like it. Just based on social media, it looks like you guys are are having fun over there and uh, yeah. in, you're working. But um, this is a significant step up for you in Alexis Salazar. He's been in with some some big names, some top guys, rising stars. What What's your uh, assessment of him as a fighter? Um, I think he's a great fighter. I think... Um, I think he's definitely gonna obviously bring the best version of him of himself come fight night, and, and um I, that's gonna obviously make me elevate my game even more. So um when I'm in there with better guys, it makes me raise my game, and I'm excited. I'm excited to put on a dominant performance, and um I know he's gonna like I said, he comes from a great gym. He's with Freddie Roach in wild card boxing, so obviously you know he's gonna be in shape. He's gonna be ready to go. Um he's definitely getting great sparring. But, um, yeah, I'm just – I'm ready to bring the best version of me that night and show the world what I'm capable of. Vito, you mentioned that you're working with uh, trainer Ronnie Shields. Can you tell us how that uh, came about and how it's been going? Yeah, um, obviously you get the opportunity to spar and be a part of a camp with a guy like Jamal Charlo. But um, it's been going great. When you, But when you – as like I'm, like I said, I'm young. I'm 21 years old. Um to get the chance to spar with a guy like Jamal Charlo every day and be around a guy like Ronnie Shields. I mean, I don't think any young fighter would turn that down. So um, just being able to be in a guy's presence, guys presence like them, um, you, you raise your game, you get better each and every time you're in there. And yeah, I'm excited to show what we've been working on um, how camp went and yeah, I'm ready to obviously it's my first fight with him. Just put on a dominant performance. How did you and uh, Ronnie hook up? Well, I've known Ronnie, obviously. I've known Ronnie a long time, obviously, uh, being at the fights and everything. Like, you you talk, you meet with guys, and um, we we just connected. Um, it came it came a point to where um, I thought it was a, a great opportunity for me to grow as a fighter, and it was more of like uh, I re- we reached out to Ronnie, and um, we talked. We sat down, we talked, and then we, we connected, and then um, we got it going out, out in Texas. Very good. Can you name one or two things that you've taken away um, specifically from working with Ronnie, things that maybe you didn't under, didn't know before? Yeah, more of just mastering your fundamentals. I think a lot of fighters, they get – obviously, you get a little too cute with doing, like, little like little cute, like, things in the, in the ring, but mastering your fundamentals. And um, Ronnie, he doesn't change you as a fighter. He implements what he already – what he thinks can better me as a fighter. So he doesn't change your style. He just implements – and um, I'm excited to show what we've been working on on fight night. Yeah, what do you think about Texas just in general? Do you miss the uh, the good Jersey Italian food? Uh, boy, do I miss Jersey. <laughs> um, I miss my mom. I miss my brother. I miss my sisters. Um, I'm just I'm ready to get back home after the, after I put on a, a dominant performance and um, see my family for sure. I miss them. Uh, Texas is good though. Um, Texas is good. Jamal, when I was leaving the gym uh, the last time on Saturday when before we flew out here, he was like, you're a Texas boy. You're from Houston now. You're from Texas. And I was like, nah, I'll forever, I'm forever from Jersey. I'm a forever going to be a Jersey kid. Well, you got you got you guys got Tommy DeVito now, too, you know, so it's going to be a good week. Yeah, that's my boy. That's my boy. Yeah, that's that's cool. You you, you talked about um, I'm a Jet fan, though. what happened? I'm a Jet fan though. I'm not a Giant fan. Oh yeah, I've noticed that. I'm just gonna ignore it. Yeah, that. but but uh, Tommy's definitely. Uh, I know him. Um, oh, really? Our families know each other as well too. So 
He's doing good. He's doing good. You guys might yeah, want to yeah, he's going. You know? Yeah, the- we we got the best QB in, in, in New in, in New York. Just remember that. The uh, Yeah, you have well for now. <laughs> for now. For now. <laughs> for now. Fair enough. Yeah, um, for now. You, you you talked about uh uh sparring with, with Jamal and what that meant for you. What did you see from from him? You know, uh what can you tell us about what you saw from him in, in this camp? He's ready to go. Um he's and I've said this in a few different interviews, but I think a lot of people they he he has that villain portray like he portrays that villain image, obviously, in the boxing game. But when you're around him, obviously that sells and everything. But when you're around him, he's truly a great person. He's down to earth, a great guy. Um, and yeah, I'm just, he'll show, he's going to be ready on fight night. He's going to put on a great show, a dominant performance. And, um, obviously the two year layoff, it, it, that you want to get a lot of sparring in with that two year layoff. Cause obviously you want to get your timing, right. You want, like, you want to be able to take shots again. Obviously you take the head year off. It's a different, th- different story, but I know he'll be ready come fight night. And, uh, he's excited. I know that that's for sure. You sir, you just alluded to this. You know, he's been off for two and a half years. So, is ring rust something you can overcome in the gym? Do you think, or is that kind of a difficult thing to do? I think it it varies with different fighters. A lot of guys like like they say on TV, oh, you you question if you could take a shot again. But for me, it's like when you've been doing something for so long, and it's really all you know. Like you know what I mean. So some guys like obviously I'm coming off uh, off a six or seven month uh, layoff as well. So, um, but I feel ready. I've never felt sharper in the gym and I'm excited. I couldn't be more excited to put on the 10 ounces under the lights again. So every, I think it's different for all fighters. Uh, other, all fighters react differently, but um, obviously seven months is a lot different than two years, but I think he's going to be ready to go. How, how, how do you benefit from being around a guy like that? You could benefit in a lot of different ways. And we, me and him have talked, we've had, we've had great conversations, um, but outside the ring more, even more than inside the ring, like he, he's telling me things that he's been through, um, what to do, what not to do. And obviously, um, like I said, he's got that villain image where a lot of people don't even really don't like, like they don't like him in the industry. Like they're, they're annoyed by him in a way. And I think, for him to overcome those things and to live every day freely. How do I put this? Like, it's more of like, he's like, he's shown me what to do. Like he's, he's talked to me about what he's been through mentally, physically, and like how he's gotten through things mentally and physically. So um, I'm excited for him. Obviously he's excited as well, but I'm excited for him to to put these two year layoff past him and uh, to keep on pushing forward. Sounds like you're expecting him to to shine on Saturday night. No, I am. I'm definitely expecting him to shine. Just because when you're around a guy like that and you like he talks to you about certain things and you get to know him, like and you become more of like you become friendly with them, like you become like a like almost like you build like a little brotherhood in such a short period of time. Right. Uh and you and he's explaining to you like the things that he's been through and, and how excited he is to show the boxing world that he's still He's still Jamal, the Jamar Charlo he was two years ago. Um, you you want nothing but the best for a guy like that. Yeah, I I, I totally understand. And and this is a a stack card. I mean, from top to bottom, you got a great main event in Demetrius uh, David Benavides versus Demetrius Andrade. What are your thoughts on on that fight and that matchup? I think that's a great fight. I think um I think a lot of people are underestimating the Boo Boo. Uh, I've known Boo Boo a long time as well. Um. He's he could fight with anybody. I could say it like that. He could fight with anybody. He could stay in there with anybody. I think it's a true 60-40, 50-50 fight. Mm-hmm. And uh I'm excited. Obviously, David Benavidez, he's gonna come and he's gonna try and hurt you. That's just his like, you know what I mean? That's how he comes to fight. So it's it's gonna be a great fight. Um, I'm excited. And I think it's a true 50-50 fight. Great fight for the fans. Vito, back to you. This will this will be your third fight this year. Where do you feel you are in terms of your uh, progression, in terms of your development? I feel like I uh, I'm raising my game every time I step in there. Um, I'm getting better day in and day out. I'm growing in the gym, growing mentally, physically, um, as a fighter, and just as a person as well. So, uh, I'm excited to show on November 25th how far I've come. Uh, since I started in my career, obviously, I think we're seeing the growth. I'm feeling the growth in the gym every day, but 
Um, in all my fights, like I feel like I'm growing. I'm getting better. Um, I'm sl the, like it's sl everything's slowing down for me. I'm sitting on my shots better. Uh, choosing my shots better. Just a, everything all around. I feel like I'm growing as a fighter. Maybe you just answer this question, but I'll ask anyway. Uh, so you, you have the one loss, a majority decision against James Martin back in 2021. I was going to ask, how are you a different fighter now? Uh, more like just I'm just mature, I'm mentally, physically stronger. I'm my IQ has gotten so much. I've grown. My IQ has grown. Um I think it's I think it's shown in all my fights to be honest. I, I I'm not a very out like going like I don't speak a lot at press conferences or whatever it may be. I'm not that outgoing guy who's going to talk a lot of trash and say I'm doing this and I'm doing that. I more of the more or less just let my let my work do the talking. Obviously going through that at what was I 18, 19 years old. Um to be honest, like it's I I tell everybody and they look at me like I'm crazy, but that's the best thing that could have happened to me in my career it's it's helped me grow as a fighter helped me grow as a person and um I, like i said i think in all my fights i've been showing uh constant growth as a fighter and uh it's only going to improve i'm only going to keep getting better and better and uh, i'm special i truly belong at the top level with uh with all these top guys and when i when you're sparring with guys like jamal that just reassures yourself that that's where you belong so you're you're still only 21, but you've been a professional now for several years. I mean, you were like a teenager yesterday. It seems. Uh, are yeah. you start? Are you starting to feel like a veteran in a way? Yeah, it's it's weird because even at 17 years old, like, was I ready to turn pro? Absolutely not. Should I have turned pro? Absolutely not. And I say that to everybody. I don't think I was even at the. I wasn't at that level yet where I should have turned pro, but when an opp opportunity presents itself, you take advantage of them. And when uh, there was a fight at the Prudential Center. Um, and, uh, that opportunity presented itself. I mean, what, what, what's a better way in my hometown than to sell a lot of tickets and come out with a big knockout? What's better than that? So I uh, obviously, and even before that fight, I, I was not even going to be turning pro. Like that was never even in my mind. I was supposed to go out and play high school football for my senior year because I had come off my, a loss in Spain for my, my last fight as an amateur was a loss in Spain and I got robbed blatantly. And I told my dad and I said, dad, I'm listen, I'm done with amateur for amateurs for now. Like I gotta, like we're going to these tournaments, spending a lot of money and to get by unbiased, this isn't uh, like this, like it's crazy. So I told him I want to go out and play football and I was getting ready. I was lifting weights. I was getting ready to go play football. I was outside running routes. And then my dad tells me there's an opportunity and I'm like, well, I'm 180 pounds right now, ready, getting ready to play football. And now I got to drop this weight to go box. <laughs> and then it was like a four or five week span of a uh, six week camp. And then that was it. So that's why I say I was, should I have turned pro at 17? Probably not. But I did. And, and I'm here now. And I've grown as a fighter, mentally, physically better. I'm, I'm growing, growing as a man every day. So I'm excited to show the world what I've been working on in the gym with Ronnie Shields and, um, yeah, we're just ready to go. Looking ahead, uh, you know, to to the future, what's the plan for Vito Malnicki Jr. in 2024? I just want to keep growing. Like I said, my time's going to come. Um, I've I've felt the growth. Like I said, like I'm feeling myself grow. I'm seeing things better in the ring. My IQ is growing. And when you're in the ring with guys like with Jamal Charlo every day, like you have no choice but to evolve as the fighter and to get better or else – you're gonna have you're gonna have very bad days. So um yeah, I'm just ready to just keep growing, keep improving, and uh my time's gonna come. Just keep keep taking our time. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Yeah, that's for sure. Are you uh you plan on fighting on the East Coast again soon? I would love that for sure. Obviously, I've been in Vegas for these past few fights. Um yeah, I'm excited. Obviously, wherever Al and the rest of the team wants to put me, we're ready to go. I love it, man. Vito. Thank you so much for your time. Wish you all the best uh, Saturday night. Of course, looking forward to your return on uh, Showtime YouTube. We can't wait. And um, hopefully we'll have you on back afterward. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. November 25th, boxing's brightest star shine on one knockout night. He is down! The Mexican monster, undefeated superstar David Benavidez. Benavidez Defends his title against undefeated Demetrius Andre. Andre explodes. And Jermall Charlo returns to take on Jose Benavidez Jr. Gets rocked with another right hand. I'm the number one candidate 
David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andre and Jermall Charlo versus Jose Benavidez Jr. Saturday, November 25th, live on pay-per-view. It's time for Mike and I to go toe to toe. This week, we are going to be breaking down Benavides versus Andrade and making our predictions. Now, in this breakdown segment, we're going to list nine categories. We're going to rate Benavides and Andrade in each one, uh, one being the lowest and five being the highest in each category. Then we're going to tally it up um, and and tell you who comes out on top as, as far as that goes for each of us. And then we're going to make our predictions. So let's start with the categories, beginning with Amateur Foundation. Mike, what you got? So obviously, Andre has an edge in his department. You know, he had an excellent amateur career. He won a world championship and competed in the 2008 Olympics. Uh, Benavides reportedly, you know, only had a handful of amateur fights. You know, listen, though, Benavides turned pro at 16. You know, that was his time to develop. That was sort of his amateur uh, uh, development time, if you will. So I'm not going to dock him too much here, but this, I have to give uh, scores of uh, five for Andre and three for Benavides. I've got five for Andrade and uh, for the same reasons you uh, you mentioned, and then four for Benavides because he did do a lot of sparring as as a as a teenager with guys like Golovkin and and so forth. So and I'm sure there was some invaluable experience there. But I uh, definitely agree with you on Andrade as far as uh, as far as his amateur foundation, which is just impeccable. What about skill set? What do you have for these two? So this this was kind of a, a tough one. You know, Andre is more athletic and flashier than Benavides, uh, but I'm not sure he's more skillful than Benavides. Uh, I think people focus on Benavides' aggressive seek and destroy style and his power, uh, and I think they forget that he's a really good boxer. You know, you can't inflict the punishment that he does unless you know what you're doing. Um, he's you know he's one of the most accurate punchers in the business. You know. Uh, for example, according to CompuBox. Uh, and he obviously knows how to cut off the ring. He does it fight after fight after fight. So I think this is closer than people might think. Uh, but I'm going to go with Andrade 5, Benavides 4. Mm, I like uh, uh, both with 5. I think Benavides' skill set's a bit underrated. I've seen him box before on his back foot, and he's got a great job. He's got counter punching. He's got every skill in the book as, as far as I'm um, concerned. Maybe his footwork isn't the greatest, uh, at least according to Demetrius Andre, it's not. Uh, I give Andre a five as well here, so both of them five. Let's move on to the next category, speed athleticism. What do you got? So Andre is quick and athletic again, you know, more athletic than Benavides. Uh, I think Benavides' hands are just as fast as Andre's, though. I think that's another people, thing that people underestimate uh, with Benavides. Um but I'm going to go uh, Andrade 5 and Benavides 4 in this category. Yeah, I, I got it the same way. Andrade 5, Benavides 4. Benavides has great, great uh, hand speed, but I think uh, he's not as quick, as fleet-footed as Andrade, so I give Andrade the edge there. What about punching power? Benavides isn't a one-punch knockout artist, but very, very few guys are. Uh, he has heavy, heavy hands, and he knows how to land them, you know, which wears down his opponents and sets up knockouts. Uh, again, he's got a very high knockout uh, ratio, 23 stoppages and 27 fights. That doesn't happen by accident. Uh, Andre isn't a light puncher by any means, but that's not his strength. So I'm going to go with Benavides 5 and Andre 3 in this category. Interesting. I've got... Uh... Benavides five here and Andre four um, because he's dropped so many of his opponents, I believe all of them. Uh, so he certainly has some pop there, but I don't think he, it's on the level of a David Benavides. And certainly we haven't seen that kind of power at 168, whereas we've seen it with David. What about uh, physical strength? I think this is another area in which Benavides has an edge over pretty much anybody he fights at 168 pounds. He's a big, strong guy who imposes his strength uh, advantage just fight after fight. Uh, and while I think Andre is a strong guy pound for pound, you know, he did start at a, as a 154 pounder. Uh, and he seemed to say he needed to add bulk, which is another way of saying strength, I think, after his debut at 168. I'm not sure he felt as strong as, as he wanted to feel. Uh, I got to think that Benavides is going to have a significant advantage in this fight uh, in terms of size and strength. So I'm going to have I'm going to go with Benavides five Andre three. Yeah, it seems like Benavides always has the advantage in terms of physical yeah. strength over everyone who faces. So I don't expect to be any different uh, against uh, Demetrius Andrade. I've got uh, Benavides at five, Andrade at four. What about versatility? 
This is another hard one. I don't think of Benavidez as a as particularly versatile because he has his distinct walk him down style, uh, as I described earlier. Uh, he just really hasn't had to adjust much in fights. Uh, I have a feeling he could if he had to. Uh, we just haven't seen it. Andre has his style too, uh, and he could probably fight effectively in different ways too. But I'm going to go four and four in this in this category. Interesting. I gave uh, uh, Benavidez a uh, four in this category, but Demetrius. Android a five here, I, you know, coming forward, side to side, moving backwards. Um, I've seen him do it all. So I, I've got to give uh, Android a bit of the edge. I've seen Benavides do some boxing, but not to the extent that I've seen, uh, you know, uh, Android show his versatility. What about durability? Benavides is a tough, durable guy. Uh, I think I've asked you this before, but do you remember him being hurt? You know, he's been down, but I don't remember him ever like, right. being hurt ever really being hurt uh i could say the same thing about andre although i think you mentioned that liam williams did might have hurt him a little bit yeah uh, it certainly got and, his attention yeah anyway I'd, I'd have to give the edge to benavides here because of his size advantage uh so i'm going to go benavides five andre four i'm right there with you in terms of dur- durability let's move on to experience what do you have here I guess this depends on how you define experience. You know, Andre has a bunch of amateur fights and more pro fights than Benavides, uh, but he's never faced a top tier guy in a big event. Uh, Benavides doesn't have a great professional resume. It's got a good one, not a great one. Uh, he's still building it. He's only 26 years old, uh, but he's had a number of high pro fights already, you know, including the one with Caleb Plant. So he's he's been here before, and 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 Andre really hasn't, at least not at this level. And you mentioned the sparring. Um, I'd sort of forgotten about that. He has you know, sparred a lot of top guys growing up. So that's really valuable experience. So um, I'm going, I'm going four and four here. I went uh, five and five here. Um, you know, I think Benavidez, when you take that sparring and then you add on these, the big fight field that he's now been involved in some of the guys that he's fought certainly has experience in Android. When you, you take a look at his amateur foundation and what he's done as professional and the uh, kind of fighters he's faced throughout his career uh, may perhaps not the level of a Kayla plant, but certainly, Quite a few good fighters. Uh, I think you you take that combined with the Amateur Foundation. You got to give him a five. What about freshness? So each guy's fought only once this year. Andre has fought only once in two years. Uh, and neither has really struggled in recent fights. Uh, I'm going to give Benavides an edge here because of the age difference. You know, he's nine years younger than Andre. So I'm just sort of surmising that he's a fresher fighter. I'm going to go Benavides five and Andre four. Same here. I mean, younger fighter, again, like you said, and, um, you know, um, I, yeah, I got five and four. So my total is Benavides 42, Andre 41. What do you got? Uh, Benavides 39, Andre 37. Interesting. Who are you picking? Yeah, it's interesting with this process. Um, as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, holy cow, Andre's going to end up with more points than uh, than. Than Benavides. Uh, it didn't work out that way, but I was wondering like halfway halfway through. And, and maybe uh, the point system is really fun and it does give, I think, our listeners a, a you know, very specific perspective on all these different categories, but um, it doesn't necessarily point directly to a result. Uh, so my prediction. So this is a strange situation. So we, we, don't, we just don't have a really good handle on what Andrade can do, even after all this time. Uh, he could come out and get stopped or even come out and just absolutely yeah. school Benavides to prove that, you know, he should have been considered one of the best fighters in the world all along if he hasn't been. Uh, I think the former is going to happen, though. This is a significant step up for him, and Benavides is the naturally bigger guy, uh, which can be an important factor. I think Benavides is going to do what he does. I think he's going to walk down Andre. I think he's going to wear him down, break him down, and either win by a late stoppage or a one-sided decision. Yeah, I, I think it's this is a really, really close fight. Um, I see different paths to victory for both guys um, in this fight. And I think it's going to be treacherous for Benavides, particularly early on, uh, because of Andrade's awkward style, because of his experience and the, the shots he throws from different angles. Uh, it's a really, really dangerous fight, but I just feel like it's David Benavides' time. Um, so I like David to grind Andre down, overcome some hairy moments early on, and stop him late in uh, another terrific performance that that uh, puts him up there as a, a fighter of the year candidate. Let's bring in a, our next guest. Uh, he is a top contender 
at 154 pounds. He is on the rise once again and knocking on the door of a world title shot. Fresh off a big win over Jesus Ramos, Erickson the Hammer Lubin. Erickson, first let me wish you a happy Thanksgiving uh, in advance. Um, how, have been, uh, how have you been spending your time since your latest win? Um, Just been chilling with my kids, um, hanging out with friends and family, not doing too much. <clears throat> just just chilling man have you have you had a chance to you know reflect on the fight uh, against jesus ramos and, and your performance that night um yeah I, I watched the fight i watched the full fight and um i believe i won the fight for sure you know i boxed him um you know he's a he's a tough competitor but you know i was just i was just hitting and not getting hit so um yeah, man, I felt like, you know, a lot of people felt like it was controversial, you know, but the uh, the judges, they had it all messed up that night. Not the right judges, the, the unofficial scorecards was all messed up that night. <clears throat> they had him um, out jabbing me. They had him up on the scorecards, crazy. Almost had him winning almost every round. And I feel like, you know, I was just in control of that fight. I feel like I, I had a, you know, my jab was on point. My movement was on point. You know, just the only time he had some type of success was when I would lay on the ropes. You know, and we we adjusted. We, um, you know, in the later rounds, I feel like, you know, I, I started to take control of the fight and won the fight. Uh, I, Erickson, I always wonder, you know, you do your thing, you think you do enough to win the fight, uh, you actually get the decision, and then people question your victory and say, no, 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 he didn't deserve that. How difficult is that? Um, I don't really, I don't really care too much about it, you know. I put the work in, and, you know, I went out there, and the judges got it right that night, you know. Very, On to very the next one. Very good. So you you mentioned that you finished strong down this, particularly strong down the stretch, which evidently earned you the victory. Uh, but uh, to me, at least, you seemed a little bit sluggish in the first half of the fight. Uh, do you agree? And is that something you want to avoid in the next fight? Oh, for sure, for sure, definitely could have um, let my hands go a lot more. <clears throat> but um, I felt like the jab was just controlling the fight. You know, he couldn't get out the way of the jab, and um, you know, the judges got it right. They for sure got it right. You know, it was a close fight. I get, um, you know, I give all praise to Jesus Ramos, but the judges got it right. Did you feel like going into the fight anyway? Did you feel like this is like a must win to get in the playoffs kind of thing? Like you needed this to 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 get yeah. to, get back to where you want to be? For sure, for sure. You know, um, I feel like a lot of people before the fight was writing me off. They felt like you know. Ramos was uh, gonna beat me, and um, the 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 Vegas um, the odds were crazy, man. The odds were crazy, and you know a lot of people made some money that night. My people, at least. Yeah, you said they would. Yeah, I remember you. They had, me as, they had me as a huge underdog. Yeah, has, has there been talk of a rematch? Nah, haven't heard anything like that. So everybody's wondering what might be next. Uh, are you targeting anyone, or what's the plan? We'll see, man. We'll see. I definitely want my re uh, rectify my losses, you know, with Charlo and Fondora. But we'll see. See how it plays out. A lot what of people moving up. A lot of people moving down. You know, the division is stacked. And, you know, I'm I'm just happy to be you know a a part of it, and I'm here to take over. I want I want the big fights. I want all the big names. I want the headlines on pay-per-view. Sounds good. So switching gears just for a second, we want to get your take on several mm -hmm. matchups the boxing, boxing world's talking about. First, we've got a big fight card, really big fight card coming up this week. What's your favorite fight on this card? Um, The Bubu Andre and Benavidez? Yeah. Um, The main event. I'm excited for that fight. You know, both of them are my guys. Um, may the best man win. So you, you mentioned the main event, David Benavides versus Demetrius Andre, and try to get away with the best man win, but we got to get your prediction, or at least how you... <laughs> <laughs> nah, 
May the best man win, man. <laughs> well, well, how do you see it playing out, though? Like, in, in your mind, at least, how do you envision it? Um, It, it could play out any way. Like, you know, Bubba Andre, he's 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 crafty. He's seasoned. And um, he got a lot of experience. So, you know, he could do his thing. He comes ready that night. And Benavidez is the, the Mexican monster. So he, you know, he always come with that flame. So we're going to see how, we're going to see how it plays out. So you feel like it's a 50-50 fight? Maybe. Maybe? Well, how do you see it? <laughs> Maybe. He trying to get an answer out of me. He trying to get an answer out of me, man. Those are my guys, man. I don't, I don't want to pick. I hear, best, man. I hear you, man. But what about the, uh, the co-man? You got Jamal Charlo. He's had fought for about almost 30 months, you know, going up against Jose Benavidez. What do you uh, think of that matchup? Um, I think Charlo comes back. I think he should come back and, um, you know, get rid of uh, Benavidez. Jose Benavidez. And he going to bounce back. Speaking of the Charlos and getting back to your division, do you foresee Jermel Charlo moving back down to 54? Think that's going to happen? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know. But we'll see how it plays out. So one fight that seems to be a possibility is uh, Charlo versus Tim Tzu. How do you think that fight would play out? Um, I'm still leaning towards Charlo. Leaning towards Charlo on that. Has uh, has Zoo impressed you with his recent performances, or what? Do you, what do you make of him? Um, he could fight. He's definitely strong. He's a hitter. Um, I wasn't too impressed with the Brian Mendoza fight, though. Like, um, Brian Mendoza was touching him up a little bit, hmm. but he still, he still, you know, he came out with the win. He did his thing. And he's he's someone you a fight targeting, strong. Right? Say it again. He's someone you're targeting, though, right? I mean, he's got a strap. I mean, he's a champion, for yeah. sure. Everybody with a belt, you know, want to yeah. fight those guys. No, uh, One fight that Jermel has spoken about uh, potentially is fighting Terrence Crawford. What do you think of uh, that potential matchup? I like that fight. I like that fight, too. Um, you know, Bud is a... He's a great fighter. He could do that. He could move up to 54. Um, Charlo, I don't know. I think I'll lean towards uh, Crawford on that one, to be honest. Really? I like boxing ability more than um, Charlo's. So I think he'll I think he'll outsmart him. Is, is, is that a fight you might want, though, you versus Terrence Crawford? Is that something you've considered? Because if he comes up to your division, you're knocking on the door. Know, the shot. Man, you can't ask me a question like that. You know I'll fight anybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'll fight anybody, man. You have. You have. You absolutely have. There's also uh, Crawford Spence, the rematch. Crawford said last week, as recently as last week, that's what he's looking at next. Uh, what do you think happens if they meet again? Man, um, I don't know. I, I, I see a lot of things on um, the internet about, you know, um, Spence and... Yeah, injuries and, you know, the weight clause and actually not the weight clause, but making the weight and um, him wanting to fight him at 54. But um, I think, I think, I think maybe the same thing happens. I think maybe the same thing happens. I think Terrence Crawford maybe has his number. I mean, one of the things I wonder is, you know, and you're, you're a fighter, you can speak to this, uh, uh, with expertise, after losing as badly as Spence did in the first fight, how difficult would it be to turn the tables? Yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. I can't see it happening. Like, I don't know. It'd be a tough assignment, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, getting back, getting back to you, uh, you joined forces with Kevin Cunningham, I think, back in 2018. How has that helped you transform as a fighter? Man, he's he's helped me um in a lot of ways, inside and outside the ring. You know, um, being a southpaw, Kevin had many southpaws coming up from St. Louis and stuff. So, you know, he's like a southpaw whisperer. He, you know, exactly he he puts the game plan together. I go out there and I execute, and 
you know, for the most part, we were successful. Was successful together. You know, looking back, you were, I mean, you were on the rise, and then you had the uh, the Fundura setback, the fight against Sebastian Fundura. How did you handle that setback, and how do you feel you've evolved as a fighter? You know, since then. Um, I just feel like you know, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't so down on myself. You know, I suffered in injuries and in, and in, in that fight. Not to make any excuses though, but you know, I suffered some injuries in that fight before that fight. And um I just I'm 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 high on myself. I just I know uh I knew I was gonna bounce back. I knew I was gonna bounce back. Same way I said with, with after the Charlo fight, I said I was gonna bounce back and I did. I'm doing the same thing now. You know, it's just a just a just a hiccup. You know, you you've been fighting professionally for a decade and you're still only 28 years old. Do you feel like as if you're in your prime right now? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I'm just now in entering my prime. You know, everything, everything clicking, man. Yeah, yeah. It seems like, would you say, I mean, you're, you're, it, you're, it's kind of like you're at the same position you were in back in 2017, but you're a different person now, you know? For sure. Mm-hmm. I'm older, got more experience. Um, got some good wins under my belt. Be former champions, be Olympians, be contenders, top contenders, undefeated, rising stars. You know, I fought them all. Yeah. You feel kind of feel like it's your time? For sure. For sure. So last question, looking ahead to, you know, to 2024, what would you say are your goals right now? Just become world champion. I think that's, you know, 2024 is my year. I, I think that's that's a perfect way to end this interview right there, Erickson. Okay. Good catching up with you, of course. Uh, congratulations again on that on, on the big win, and and looking forward to seeing what what 2024 has in store for you. Thank you, man. November 25th, boxing's brightest star shine on one knockout night. He is down. The Mexican monster, undefeated superstar David Benavidez. Benavidez defends his title against undefeated Demetrius Andre. Andre explodes! And Jermall Charlo returns to take on Jose Benavidez Jr. Gets rocked with another right hand! David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andre and Jermall Charlo versus Jose Benavidez Jr. Saturday, November 25th, live on pay-per-view. That's going to do it for this week's show. We want to thank Erickson Lubin and Vito Melnicki for joining us. Don't forget, guys, Saturday night, it's going down one of the best cards of the year, if not the best card of the year. Truthfully, I think it is the best card of the year. Uh, headlined by David Benavidez versus Demetrius Andre, two unbeaten Two-time world champions facing off in a terrific uh, super middleweight matchup. And, of course, the co-feature, the return of Jamal Charlo versus David's brother, older brother, Jose Benavidez Jr. Just a great card all around. Do not forget the uh, the Showtime YouTube channel as well um, prior to the pay-per-view. So if you're home, you're probably you know still recovering from Thanksgiving, probably still stuffed from leftovers. Just a, a great night of action. Uh, for fight fans want to thank you all for tuning in and be sure to check us out next week where we're going to break down all of this weekend's action right here on the pbc podcast